Hey, Tim Schetz here again with C4D Training. Today we have the second part in our multi-part series on using MoGraph. So last time we went over the cloner. So this time if we go up here to MoGraph, I'm going to go ahead and show you the matrix object. And when I select that, I get a little matrix object there. And when I render it, I see nothing. And a lot of people get confused by this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that for a second. All right, so let's say that I create a cloner. So I'm going to come up here, MoGraph, cloner object, and I'm going to create a cube. And I'm going to go ahead and scale that down. And I'm going to throw my cube into my cloner. And now I get my clones. Well, I'm going to go ahead and switch my cloner instead of linear. I'm going to make it object mode. And currently I don't have an object in here. So I'm going to go ahead up to MoGraph and I'm going to add that matrix object. And so now I get these little cubes again, render it and we get nothing. And so what I'm going to do is in my cloner object, since I have it set to object mode, I get this little box down here that says object. Well, I'm going to take my matrix object and I'm going to drag it in there. And lo and behold, my clones appear on my matrix. And now if I render it, I see my clones. And you may say to yourself, well, why is that useful? Because I could just do that instead of having a matrix object there, I could set my cloner to grid array and get the same effect. Well, let me show you something here. I'm going to go ahead here and add a null object. So again, remember, just a, a null object is just kind of like a folder to throw things in and kind of keep them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my cloner into the null object. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a bend deform. So these are our deformation guys. So I just selected bend. And I'm going to put my bend into my null object as well. And so now you can see this purple box surrounding my matrix or my clones, right? So I go to my bend and I come down here to the strength and I do this. You can see I can bend my clones, but see how they're kind of stretching out? That may not be what you're looking for. So if that's not what you're looking for, if you just want the clones to clone, but go on a curve, I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add my matrix object again. And I'm going to move my bend, and I'm going to put my bend in my matrix object. Okay, so you can see my matrix object's got my little, my little guys here. And what I'm going to do is put my matrix object in my null with my cloner. So now I have a matrix object with the bend and my cloner and the cube. Currently my cloner is set to grid array. I'm going to go ahead and set that back to object. And in my object box here, I'm going to go ahead and drag my matrix object. And now if we look at this, my clones bend along that bend deformation, but they don't stretch. So if I go to my bend and I go like this, I can have my clones do a little dance. Do, 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 okay. Um, so that's how you can use the matrix object. Set it up and drag it into the object box with your cloner set to object mode. And if you have the thinking particles module for Cinema 4D, the matrix object allows you to control your thinking particles through MoGraph. That's a little bit beyond this tutorial, but perhaps in a future one we will cover that. All right, so next up, we're going to move down the list here. So we did cloner a matrix, so now we're going to do the fracture object. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some text here. And if I just come down here and I type in C4D training, you know, little plug for the site. There's my text. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that into an extrude NURB. And I'm going to make that a child of the fracture object. And now the fracture object does exactly what it says. It fractures your object. But it, in order to do that, we also want to use effectors. So I'm going to go ahead and select my fracture object 
And with that selected, if I come up here to MoGraph and I come down to Random Effector, we haven't gone over effectors really that much, but bear with me here. I'm going to add Random Effector, which will randomize the movement and whatnot. So now if I go to my Fracture Object under the Effectors tab, there's my Random Effector, okay? So if I go to my Fracture Object and go to the Object tab, right now it's set to Straight. I'm going to go ahead and go to Explode Segments. And you see automatically what happens is it blows apart my text. And what it's doing is it's blowing apart the extrude and the two faces. And, you know, it's okay. So if I come up here to my Random Effector, just select the Parameter tab. And right now it's affecting position, so I can, you know, kind of make this all crazy and have the parts all go everywhere. But that's, I'm not sure that that's what I want. So I'm going to go over here to my Fracture object, and instead of Explode Segments, which blows apart all of the polygons, or at least the sections, Explode Segments and Connect, it recognizes that these segments are one letter, and so then it keeps your letters together. And so then I can do my Random Effector. So if I come up here to Random Effector, Position, I'm going to make these like crazy numbers. So 600, 600, 600. Holding down the control key, I can click on that little dot, that one, and that one. And now I've keyframed my X, Y, and Z positions for my random effector. So now I'll come down here to, I'll just do it to like 20 frames. And I'm going to set these all back to zero. And then I got to control click them again because see how they're yellow, we need them to be red. So control click, control click, control click. And so now if I rewind my animation and hit play, Boom, my letters come in. Kind of boring, so let's go ahead and select our Fracture object, and we can come up here to MoGraph, and we're also going to select the Delay Effector. And I have another tutorial on the site that covers using a Delay Effector to kind of add bounce to things, but we're, that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to select my Delay Effector. I'm going to go to the Effector tab, and the only option we have here is Mode, really, and so we're going to bring that down to Spring, and I'm going to just dial it up a little bit because I like, you know, I like it to be really springy. And if I go and look on my Fracture object now in the Effectors, because I had my Fracture object selected when I went up and selected the Delay Effector, it automatically added it. If it didn't, if it brought it up here, I can just go to my Fracture object, the Effectors tab, and drag my Delay Effector in. Okay, so I'm going to rewind this now, and when I play this, and they have the little bounce there. Boing. Okay. So that is kind of just a brief introduction to the Fracture object. All right, so next up on our list under the Fracture object is the Instance object. And I apply my Instance object and nothing happens. So what we want to do is we want to create an object. So I'm just going to, let's see, how about if we do... I don't know, a platonic. We'll do something a little bit different. I always use a cube. So there's my platonic. And I'm just going to move it over here a little bit. And if I select my instance object and I go to the object tab, I have this thing called object reference. And then I have history depth. So in our object reference, we're going to take our platonic and we're going to drag it in there. Okay. And history depth, I'm just going to leave it 10 for now. Now if I select my instance object and I move it over and I'm going to go ahead and keyframe that and then I'm going to come down, I don't know, 40 frames and move my instance object. And I think I will also rotate it a little bit and then keyframe it. So now if I rewind this and I play, see I get a trail of my platonics. There they go. And I'm going to go ahead and select my instance object. And I'm going to just reduce this number a little bit here. Let's do like three or four. And there we go. Kind of cool. Now, the only thing about the instance object is that you have no control over when these guys fade or anything like that. We can, however, in our instance object, go to our effectors tab and yes, we can apply effectors. So I could do a random effector. 
and we'll just leave it with its preset. And now if I rewind this and play, I get this crazy <laughs> platonics kind of jumping all around. Uh, maybe instead of the random effector, we could do the step effector. And for step effector, I'm going to just leave the scale selected. And now if I rewind this and play, oh, we didn't actually get our step effector into the instance object, so we're going to go ahead and throw that in there. And now if I rewind this and play, we can see sort of, I think the uh, step effector is set too high. I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller. And so you can see the first one is a little bit smaller and they get bigger as they go back. I could also change my instance object and create a, a much bigger trail. And then we get this cool. So that's the instance object in MoGraph. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. You can create these sort of pattern like things, uh, sort of almost bug like or something. And uh, you can create repeating patterns. You could also throw, instead of just using a platonic or just a, an object, we could come in here and we could say cloner object, throw our platonic into the cloner, select our cloner instead of linear. We could do radial. I'm going to change and change my radius there. And now if I go to my instance object instead of just the platonic, I'm going to grab my cloner and throw that in there. Now if I rewind and play, now I get kind of a crazy, really crazy sort of thing going on. So, you know, good for motion graphics, kind of creating some cool patterns and whatnot. Hope this was helpful, and part three will be coming up soon. I'm Tim Schetz, C4D Training. Thanks for watching.